This is my interpretation of Demolition 1972. In 1972, Newcastle was undergoing a rapid change. Highlighted at the time as a positive change, but in fact, it was more of a destruction of the city's heritage. So, let's explore this change in city and pick up where Amber left off in 1972. This is Newcastle's big market and the site of the former town hall that was demolished in 1972. The town hall stood on the site for over 100 years. In 1972, the town hall was demolished following opening of the civic centre at Barris Bridge. Often called one of the largest post-war buildings in Newcastle, the modernist civic centre was opened in 1967. The scale of this compared to the town hall demonstrates both the aspirations for the city and the money available to councils at this time. At the time, there was a desire for modern office accommodation in the city that saw old buildings replaced. Stone buildings were being replaced by steel and glass constructions, which embraced the principles of modernism, including clean lines and a lack of ornamentation. Now, this previously modern office accommodation behind me is due to be replaced again with residential flats, although this won't see the building be demolished. The city lost many of its historic buildings in the 1960s and 70s due to the comprehensive redevelopment of the city proposed at the time. This would have seen motorways cutting into the city from all directions and new walkways to lift pedestrians above the existing roads. Comprehensive redevelopment was seen as the only solution by city planners as the medieval and Georgian layouts of streets was not suited to catering for the growing amount of traffic on the road. Northumberland Street, the main regional shopping street of North East England, had historically formed the A1. However, growing traffic levels had made this a deeply unpleasant place to shop. Shoppers were reduced to narrow paths and even staircases to cross the busy A1. In order to combat this, a solution of traffic on lower levels and pedestrians elevated above was proposed. This was never fully realised in the city, other than in one location, to the east of the city centre. The skywalks, as they are known, led to a deeply unpleasant public spaces. The fate of Northumberland Street saw a fully pedestrianised street following the construction of the Central Motorway East. There was also a desire for modern shops in the city, as a lot of the shops dated back to Richard Granger in the 1830s, where he built Granger Town. Therefore, there was a real desire for modern retail space within the city itself. The redevelopment of any part of a city leads to loss of heritage. However, comprehensive redevelopment in the 60s and 70s led to a greater loss of heritage than before. 100-year-old buildings were torn down and replaced by a brick and glass shopping mall. The comprehensive redevelopment of Newcastle was never fully realised. However, 
The development at this time hit really every point of the city, including iconic landmarks such as All Saints Church behind me. One of Newcastle's most principal streets, the side which connects the city centre to the river, even experienced this. Here, in 1972, another building was being demolished. This was for the formation of Kale Cross House, one of Newcastle's tallest buildings at the time. The lower portion of this building is the juxtaposition of a brick facade with windows that stretch out from the facade. Above this is a podium where a tower sits. Now, Kale Cross House itself is facing redevelopment. Originally built as an office block, with the changing needs of office accommodation, this is now being converted into residential flats. The transformation during the 60s and 70s aimed at making it a modern regional centre for Newcastle. The results of what was created was a lot less than that. Instead, it sought to invite the motor car into every point of the city, a demolition of historic parts of the city centre. Walkways and skywalks poorly lit and poorly maintained under and over motorway-sized roads. The loss of historic buildings, which now would have been repurposed. The invitation of the motor car into the city centre. 